our mission is to both inspire audiences to bring the joy and feeling of jazz to more people and to grow audiences. Um, these partnerships are wonderful because they enable new audiences to hear the music and enable us to meet new people and to uh, display exactly what it is that we do and what we present to the world. Um, as I said, we've done uh, lots of education programs and uh, things in New York City, but we also, as part of the Rhythm Road partnership with the State Department, present concerts here um, at National Geographic Live. Uh, so these groups that we send around the world also perform both at our jazz club, Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola in New York, and perform here in Washington, D.C. before they go on the road. Um, we've ha featured uh, Washington musicians and w at least one of the concerts in this series will be focused on local Washington DC artists, many of whom we know also. Um, and I think uh, I'm really thrilled and I think it will be a good time, just as it was many, many years ago in these very rooms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kat. Now, last but not least, uh, I'll leave the floor to Mr. Tim Keating, Senior Vice President of the Boeing Company, which has generously underwritten the Jazz Series. Thank you. It is a real pleasure to be here with you today and to be with you, Mr. Ambassador and Kat Henry. And we really salute them for their vision and dedication for putting this series together and making it a reality. You know, Jazz is bringing people together. It brings the United States and Turkey together. Just as the Boeing Company is dedicated to bringing people together, to making the world a smaller place, to making a connection. And to do that in this magnificent facility with the Ambassador's vision and Kat's drive is going to be a, an amazing event and we're just proud to be a part of it. It's also fitting that we come together at the Turkish Embassy. Uh, you know, Turkish culture sits at the cornerstones of so many history and civilizations. And we're proud to be partners with the Turkish government. And here again today, pleased to extend that partnership with this venture. I'd also like to note that the English uh, translation for the name Etragon means living in a hopeful future. And while we're here to honor the past, it also has an eye on celebrating the future and the great art form that we call jazz. So finally, it's only fitting that we make this announcement during Black History Month as we celebrate an art form in which so many African Americans have made such amazing contributions. And the Boeing Company is again pleased and honored to be with you, Mr. Ambassador and Kat. Um, Please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to give a very brief uh, historical background of this uh, magnificent building. This building was owned um, by the inventor of the uh, uh, metal soda caps. And he was so wealthy at the end of um, 1800s, very end of 1800s, that he started to develop some philanthropic type of uh, um, uh, interests. So one of his uh, favorite cities was Istanbul. And then Ottoman Empire inspired him a lot. And he used to travel quite often to Istanbul. And he met with another American there who happened to be uh, the, one of the chief architects of the Ottoman Palace. It's uh, two Americans meet in Istanbul, just uh, it's <laughs> Very interesting. And then he asked him, and that, that gentleman, uh, the, the architect, actually built the then American uh, representation there, the building who's uh, vacated now. They moved into a new building somewhere uh, up on the hills in Sarier, I believe. But the old one is a really magnificent, very impressive building uh, like this one. Anyway, uh, they became friends, and he wanted him to build a house for him in, in Washington. And uh, 
with some futures from oriental culture and architecture. And that's why you see so many uh, 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 you know, wooden carvings all around this, uh, uh, this house. Uh, it was not quite usual then in, in Washington. And if you look back and see that, that uh, arch-like uh, uh, you know, carving a wooden one, it's uh, from massive wood. It is really uh, a, a piece of art. And uh, when it's closed, you'll see a, a circle of it, and we will uh, maybe look into it. Anyway, this house has been uh, finished in 1915, 95 years ago. So everything you see in this house, everything, just look around and see uh, the chandeliers and everything. Uh, first, you will see them and the pictures that uh, you could just uh, check a little while later. Uh, most of them are uh, original. 65% of everything you see here are original. And some of the furniture, uh, so, uh, upholstery, of course, uh, was changed, uh, but the structure is, is the same. Uh, and it's so delicate. So living in this house is like putting a mattress in a museum and just, uh, 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 you know, to go uh, in, in a family life in a museum, it's, it's, it is uh, interesting, uh, to say the least. Anyway, now, so uh, what happened was he, before his death in 1928, uh, he, he didn't live here too long, um, almost a little more than a decade, but he pulls uh, all his family members around and he says, if you happen to sell this house after my passing away, you should go to the Turks and give them the right of first refusal. So uh, his elder daughter, 1930, came to the Turks and she says, well, I, we, we need to sell this house and this is uh, what our father told us so would you be willing to buy this house? And at the time, the Turkish government, it was the Great Depression time, don't uh, you know, make a bold mark under this, uh, uh, but we had the uh, a wise decision and we bought this house uh, for 200,000 uh, US dollars. Uh, it may seem something, you know, <laughs> insignificant uh, to you today, but then it was uh, a lot of money. Uh, now today, even this chandelier pr probably is more expensive than uh, uh, the, the, the price of this. Is. And some of them uh, in, in the back, the it paintings are from 16th century. Uh, and and uh, once, when I was, I used to serve here as, as a counselor, nobody insured this house. Why? Because uh, it was uh, really, I think, priceless. I mean, this is, uh, this is first thing. The second thing, the necessary un infrastructure for taking measures against uh, 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 the risk of, of fire and uh, other things. And the electricity uh, wires were all down. So what we did three years ago, uh, it took three and a half something years that we renovated the house. But it was a delicate renovation. So historical, uh, uh, you know, institutions, of course, uh, helped us. And we, I think we did a good job. And uh, coming to uh, uh, the, the, the room that uh, we speak now uh, before you, this room has acoustics, as you see, this, uh, uh, the upholstery there. Uh, uh, this is, uh, they say the experts are for acoustics because the second wife of that gentleman who owned or who invented those metal gold caps was an opera singer. So apparently she used to, she used to, to practice in this room. Later on in 1930, we had our first ambassador here. Uh, again, he was, uh, one of the grandfathers of, of Muhtar Kent. Uh, and uh, he served here four years. 
and he was followed by the, the Mukhtar Kent, you know, he's the uh, CEO of, of uh, Coca-Cola. And then Mehmet Mir Ertegun came with his two, two sons, uh, or then teenagers, and, uh, and uh, they stayed here in this house 10 years. 10 years later, when their father died, it was taken, I mean, the, the funeral was, uh, the basket was taken to Turkey by uh, the aircraft carrier Missouri at the time for a, for a gesture and for a sort of a message to then other side of, of this uh, uh, you know, polarized world, you know. Uh, so it was a gesture to Turkey.